Vice President, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, so your financial stability report had basically a warning for banks that, uh, that some are too uh, optimistic on their provisioning. I mean, how serious is this problem of provisioning you think going to be? Well, what we have done is, uh, you know, to indicate first that there is a profitability problem of the European banks and that the pandemic has aggravate, aggravated this, uh, this situation and that uh, non-performing loans are going to be on the rise, so that, uh, you know, there is, uh, let's say, a delay between the evolution of the economy and uh, the, the formation of non-performing loans that, uh, you know, in the first half of next year, we will see an important increase in non-performing loans and so that banks have to react eh, through the correct provisioning. And I think that this is something that is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite relevant. Okay. So it's the combination of, uh, you know, non-performing loans that are going to be on the rise plus, you know, provisioning. And what we have found is that, uh, you know, using models, uh, the level of provisioning is not high enough, eh, according to the models. There are some uh, caveats, some nuances, for instance, you know, the public guarantee schemes, the moratoria that can give rise to a different, uh, you know, evolution in terms of number for loans and in terms of provisioning. But I think that uh, it's important to bear in mind and to uh, uh, emphasize that uh, number for loans will, will increase with a certain delay and that banks have, uh, you know, to, to, to provision accordingly and that under provisioning is a risk uh, in terms of financial stability of the banks. Okay, then there's uh, slightly confusing messages coming out this morning on the immediate prospects for banks because it's been reported that your colleague Eve Mersch is saying that uh, it's possible banks will be allowed to repay, to start repaying dividends next year, start paying their dividends. Um, and on the other hand, you're talking about the concerns over provisioning. I mean, what is the immediate outlook for dividends in that context? Well, the first thing that I have to say is that, you know, the suspension of dividends, that is a decision that we took uh, some months ago, is a temporary and extraordinary measure for extraordinary times. And uh, is part of an effort in order to, to dedicate all the resources of the banks to maintain the flow of credit, to avoid a credit crunch. So, uh, having said that, well, with respect to the decision that we have to take in December, that nothing has been decided so far. It will depend, first of all, on our projections, because our projections will be released uh, uh, on December the 10th. And secondly, you know, according to these projections and taking into consideration, you know, other elements and, the, you know, our, our forecast and how we see the situation. But always, you know, with uh, the main purpose of maintaining the flow of credit, we will take our, our decision. So, you know, I would not prejudge what we are going to do. But I repeat again that, uh, you know, the, the dividend suspension and the payout suspension is a temporary and extraordinary measure. As is the emergency monetary policy, which is linked to the crisis phase of this uh, pandemic. Would it not make sense to link bank dividends to the crisis phase explicitly as well? Well, you know, as, as you have indicated in terms of, uh, you know, our purchase program, the PEP program, it's quite clear, it's quite, uh, quite clear that it's a temporary and, and, and extraordinary you know, an emergency program that uh, in order to deal with and to address, you know, the problems of the pandemic. So there is a certain level of, of, of uh, parallelism in that, uh, in that, uh, in that respect. Uh, well, uh, we know that the pandemic, uh, you know, is going to be a temporary effect, that, uh, you know, it has a very profound impact on economic activity and with uh, potential consequences of financial stability. But we will have to deal with, uh, you know, this situation from different uh, points of view, monetary policy, uh, you know, macro prudential mm. policy, uh, supervisory policies. And this is what we are doing. You know, we, are going, we are trying, but we are, you know, totally focused on trying to, uh, to, to overcome, and, you know, uh, you know the, 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 the impact of the mm. pandemic because we know that eventually the pandemic will fade away. So dividends might, and I stress might, be allowed to be paid again in 2021? Well, I would not, uh, <laughs> I would not say that, you know. What I would say is that, uh, you know, first of all, this is extraordinary, this is temporary. We will see what happens you now with the projections. But, uh, you know, the main point that I would like to stress is that uh, you have to put it in the context. And the context is that, uh, you know, the main purpose of all the measures that we have taken is to keep the flow of credit alive eh, 
because otherwise, you know, if you put on top of a, a sanitary crisis, of an economic crisis, a credit crunch, then the situation could mm. become much, much worse. So this is a key part of your December monetary policy decision. Um, it's pretty clear, as you say, the ECB wants to keep financing conditions loose for as long as necessary. Um, you're going to have to take a decision as to how long you think that is going to be in December with caveats. How long do you think? Well, uh, you know, we will have to analyze the projections. We, we have, uh, you know, very good and positive uh, news coming from, uh, you know, the, the availability of vaccines and that vaccines will be rolled out, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, we will see how vaccination takes place. Uh, you know, one thing is the availability of the, of the, of the vaccine and a different issue is to have, you know, an important percentage of the European population vaccinated. There are logistic problems, distribution projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this, all these elements will be taken into consideration. We will look at, uh, you know, the projections. We will look at different scenarios because the level of uncertainty continues to be very high. But I think that there is something that is quite relevant. Uh, you know, the news about the availability of the vaccines, uh, you know, have had a very positive impact on sentiment and animal spirits. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that is a ray of hope. Uh, and this is something that we have to take into consideration. But, uh, you know, the, the level of uncertainty continues to be very, very, very important. Uh, the market is fixated to a certain extent on the size of the increase in the pandemic program. 500 billion euros, 600 billion, whatever it may turn out to be. Is there not a case for saying we're not going to give you a number? We're just going to keep pumping money into the economy as long as needed. Maybe put a time frame on it before you review again, but not give a number. Is there a case for that? Well, you know, we have not decided yet. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, the governing council will have to decide. Uh, there, are, there are different alternatives. We are calibrating all the alternatives now, uh, all the instruments that we have, uh, we have available. Uh, but I think that is going to depend uh, mainly on uh, our projections, on, you know, mm. our, our, our forecasts. Uh, mm, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, there are a lot of elements that are going to be around. For instance, you know, the evolution of oil prices that is clearly on the rise following, you know, the better sentiment in the marketplace. Uh, for instance, uh, you, know, uh, what's, you know, the availability of the vaccination and, uh, you know, when vaccination is going to take place. Well, these are the kind of elements that we are going to take into yeah. consideration. But so far, we have not taken any sort of decision. And I suppose that uh, the governing council in December you know, we'll, we'll, we'll analyze all the alternatives. And, uh, you know, uh, our PEP program is the core element of our, of, our, right. of our fight against the consequences of the pandemic. Uh, the, the other core element is the uh, targeted uh, longer-term refinancing operations, Teltro's, very cheap loans to banks. It seems pretty clear there's a good chance of more of those, because only one is currently planned for 2021, but also more attractive terms. Well, uh, we will analyze, you know, the impact that Teltros have had in terms of credit flows uh, and we will decide consequently. No, but uh, so far we have not taken any decision. I think that is premature huh, to try to advance what is going to happen. But uh, the only thing that I can tell you is that, you know, there are a lot of elements hmm, around uh, projections, what's going to happen in the fourth quarter of, the, of this year in terms of economic performance. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, well, you know, the containment measures that have been taken by the governments is going to give rise, uh, we believe, that uh, to a negative growth rate in the, in the mm. fourth quarter. Uh, this is going to have an impact on 2021. As well, you know, our projections with respect to, 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 to inflation, uh, vaccination. So all these elements will, take, mm. will be taken into consideration when we decide, uh, you know, the actions that we are going to take in December. And coming back to financial stability, uh, a quick word on non-banks, investment funds and the like. They were a source of concern back in March, globally, not just in the Eurozone. Are you preparing to clamp down in some way? Well, you are totally right. Uh, you know, in March, uh, we, we had some very important liquidity problems and some liquidity mismatches. And in a segment that, uh, you know, theoretically was the most liquid one, that uh, is the, the space of the money market funds. So I think that, uh, you know, we are working at the international level in the, in the, in the forum of the FSB in order to improve uh, the macroprudential toolkit available in order to deal with this situation. And I think that the main conclusion is that ex ante uh, measures are much more useful and much more powerful than ex post measures or liquidity tools. Yeah. This is one of the conclusions that, uh, you know, I think that is very important. To but the call by the ECB for stronger macroprudential powers is 
gone on for years. Now you've got a stronger case. Do you think you've got a better chance? Yes, for sure. I think that uh, you know the March uh, event was not an anecdote uh, because, well, uh, you know, the uh, non-banks are becoming more and more important in terms of the funding of the economy. And what happens with non-banks is, uh, you know, and I refer to the European economy, is becoming much more, much more relevant, and so we have to pay much more attention to that. Okay. So uh, I think that we have learned, uh, you know, a lesson. I think that what uh, you know impeded uh, that, uh, you know, the turmoil that we had uh, became a real accident was the intervention of the of the ECB, and uh, well, this is something that we have to take into consideration, and we have to learn mm. about uh, you know concrete periods of uh, market turbulence, and I think that the March. Uh, you know, event was something that was quite relevant.